Hey home bakers, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk and listen, it's been very nearly two years since the last food festival I demonstrated at uh, and that is a lot. Food festivals are a massive part of what I do. Uh, I enjoy them so much and what I've discovered over the last two years, I need them. I need you uh, in the audience uh, to be able to function <laughs> in life in general. Uh, so if you haven't been to a food festival yet, and you live in the UK, try and get yourself to a foodies this year if you feel comfortable enough about going. There's one at Sion Park I'll be at, there's one at Brighton, and I think I'm the one at Oxford as well. And this is the one from Winchester last weekend uh, that I did. The sound is a little bit dodgy, you'll hear some crowd noise, sometimes my face is hidden behind a giant screen. Uh, but hey, I thought you might enjoy seeing this start to finish, because we've never done it before. Um, so here it is, you won't be able to see much of the food and if you want a more thorough video on the buns that I am making, uh, let me know and I'll make it. The recipe for the buns is on the blog already, so if you want to make them, the link's underneath for you. Uh, and that's it. Roll it! You'll have seen my next guest appearing on Sunday Brunch. You get a little oo for that. I know, a little bit of Sunday brunch alumni in the house and on his YouTube channel, Bake With Jack. What this man does not know about bread is not worth knowing. You're going to pick up loads and loads of tips and tricks from him. So I want you to go absolutely crazy for Mr. Jack Sturgis. <laughs> Have you missed that? Yes. Isn't it? Are you serious? I know. Yeah, it's been two years, isn't it? It's been, it's been rubbish. I've been like in my kitchen talking to myself, yeah. as you do, Me too. Making, making dinner for Chris. And he's like, thank you. He's very nice. But he doesn't give me a round of applause. That's a shame. It's, it's rubbish. Out. It's yeah. rubbish. I always it's... get a round of applause for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's been long, hasn't it? I think I've probably forgotten what to do. I may try halfway. It's fine. I'll it's try fine. and hold it together. We're with you. We're I'm with you. It's a show of strength. We, we love it. We love it. If you want to have a cry, just let it go. You're with family and friends here. It's all good. <laughs> so you've had a lot going on the last couple of years because you built yourself a brand new kitchen. I, I built a kit. I built a kitchen. You sounds did. better than what it was. <laughs> I hired a van and picked up an old kitchen out of someone's garage. Yeah. And screwed it onto a wall. <laughs> I'm recycling. Exactly. Yeah. Upcycling. Upcycling. Cycling. Yes, yeah, so I built a little studio space for myself because uh, there was nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, so that's what I did, and I have a studio space for YouTube, so I can film slightly better videos. That's uh, fantastic. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> that's the plan. You've yeah. been a bit busy. But Bake With Jack, your YouTube channel, has, I mean, so many videos with so many great tips for people. I think so, yeah, that's what I try and do. Um, <laughs> what, what we try and touch on is something a little bit, like I deal with bread, mostly. All different kinds of bread, sweet bread like we're doing today. Um, you know, baguettes, sourdoughs, and I think it's the little things that people don't kind of talk about very much. Mm. That's what's going to stitch you up at the end of the day. So we can all follow, hey, we can all follow a recipe. <laughs> Stack it up for days. Just popping in. Right, hello. Oh, you've got your after. What are you lost? What are you after, Dave? I'm taking my strawberries away. No, I'm good. Good Thank you. No, thank you. I'm fine. Well, yeah, I might get a bit in my teeth. <laughs> we don't want to do it. No, we don't. <laughs> Amazing. See Round of applause for Dave Bye. Friday off the Bake Off. Absolute stuff. This is Dave's first ever demo today. I know. Did he nail it? Apart from when he cut his finger off. And he nailed it, <laughs> and he's also got some great stories that he can share when he's a big story. star later on yeah, exactly. about how I burnt his. his pastry cases. Is that your responsibility? It was my fault. Wow. I dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> You're not giving me anything to do today, are you? Uh, no, don't worry about it. Phew. It's easy. Phew. My goodness. It. So cool. Oh, well, I think it, it is important. We do have a lot of things that we think we have to do with bread yeah. that are not right. So things like using room temperature water. Yeah. What is room temperature water? Right, for me, at room temperature is wherever it is in the day, which today is about 43 <laughs> degrees. Um, there's a lot of things in breads like that. They might scare people off, and that's what the worry is for me. I want to kind of knock them on the head, 
it's easier than what you think once you understand the principles of the bread though. That's okay. what I try and do. Excellent. Well, what are you making for us today? So today we're doing uh, apple and cinnamon buns with mm. pecans. I'll oh. finish them with a bit of toasted pecans. It's a sweet, enriched bread dough, which is really easy to make. Uh, should we do it? Yeah, let's do a little shimmy and a soft go, green go okay. over there. You can get to work. Okay, so bread dough is four things most of the time. Flour, water, salt and yeast. Uh, right. Fortunately, we have those things here today. <laughs> uh, we're doing an enriched dough, which means we're going to add butter, uh, sugar and eggs okay. uh, to our dough to enrich it. Make it sweet, nice. softer, make it puff up even more uh, than it hopefully already will. Excellent. So I'm going with dry yeast. Oh, this is different for you. This is new because I don't want to go into a shop anymore. <laughs> I think that's all right. <laughs> yes. Uh, we can get this off the shelf. So this is dry yeast. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going in with 10 grams of dry yeast. And I'm going to put it straight into my bowl like this. Okay. Everything I'm weighing into the bowl on top of one another, yeah? And it's a little bit risky that way, <laughs> but I like a bit of risk and a bit of danger. <laughs> just to mix it up. <laughs> Can I just grab that box? Right? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'll put it here. He's a tidy chef. It's been so long since we've done this, right? So I didn't have any flyers. No. So I haven't really given anyone a flyer for two years. Yeah. So today I made my own and I've done a little bit stroke uh, illustration of each one for you. Oh my goodness. Please, that's... please forgive me because I was doing it in the car on the way over. So it's a little bit bumpy on the way. Right, so yeast is in the bowl. I'm going to go with 180 grams of room temperature milk, okay? Room temperature milk is what we need. Most of the time in my home it's about 21 degrees. Uh, 22 degrees apart from today. Yeah. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is, if you have a room temperature dough in an environment that is the same temperature, there's a dough, because it's the room temperature. Does that make sense? It's been a long time. Then your dough won't change temperature. It's a, your dough is time, time sensitive in that uh, the warmer it is, the quicker it will pump up, and the cooler it is, the slower it will puff up. And all of that stuff's okay. Yeah. We just don't want it to fluctuate in temperature all the time. This is why people on the Bake Off have trouble. Yeah. Because they're putting it in somewhere warm and taking it back out again, and the whole thing is just a bit fun. So we're not meant to put it in the airing cupboard then? No way. Absolutely no way. What? <laughs> no, that is doing that stuff. Outside, on the uh, room temperature, on your kitchen side, everything will pop up fine. It'll be much easier that way. Okay. So milk, yeast, egg, gosh. <laughs> uh, I like to whisk this up. You don't need to do this. I just like whisking is quite pleasing, isn't it? <laughs> Especially it is, it's a very pleasing thing pleasing. to do. What you'll notice here, and what half of my mission is, is that a lot of this stuff is quite pleasing. Yeah? These buns are going to take four hours to make. <laughs> okay, let's just get that out of the way. I hope you're comfy. Right. Have four you been, have you been to, to the loo? <laughs> well, that doesn't mean that these buns are going to take four hours to make. Okay. okay. Like, in that, you, you don't have to do stuff for four hours. So it's not four hours worth of work. No one. Right. If you broke it down, it's probably about 20 minutes worth of work. Excellent. Across four hours. So that's whisked up, I'm happy with that. Inside this bowl, I've got strong white bread flour, uh, golden cast of sugar, and I'm looking for the salt. Here it is. Because even though we're making something sweet, salt is really important. Otherwise, it can taste like cardboard, <laughs> which is not what we want. Five grams of salt going in. Lovely. That. That's why everything tastes better at a restaurant, isn't it? Exactly. Salt. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. Exactly. Tiny little bit, though. Just you know, yeah. it's important. I, think. I mean, right. it's going across a lot of you know, a lot of bread. Exactly. Right. So here we go. We've got the wet stuff here, the dry stuff here. The dry one goes into the one like this. Mm -hmm. We've also got butter, and we could put it in now, but. Um, we're not going to. In theory, you should put the butter in after you mix everything up. Right. A small amount, this amount, I can just pop that in and mix up, it'll be fine. But it's just nice to play by the rules sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> right. So I'm using this Bake with Jack Dough scraper. Hey, that's really important. Sponsor that. <laughs> Who's got Bake with Jack Dough scraper in the kitchen at home? Yes! That's my mum, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's two people. Hey! Really. These are the most helpful things in the world, I'm not just saying that, because uh, I've got 1,500 in a warehouse. 
with your oh, navel. I'm saying it because exactly because they're really helpful to mix with to cut with. You see, I use it in loads here, and it's also handy to have a dose scraper scraper to scrape off your dose scraper. <laughs> So you should definitely buy two, exactly. is what we're saying. And um, you can get a pack of three, so if you need a dose scraper, scraper, scraper. Amazing. That's an option. <laughs> but there is a limit, right? Butter goes in, it's soft. It is very soft. <laughs> soft today. I'm going to mix it up, and then we're going to get this mess out onto the table for kneading. Okay. Okay. Well, this is this is where I, I come unstuck with bread. You have to knead it for an hour, don't you, to get it. Yeah, oh yeah, you've got to keep kneading uh, it. Eight minutes normally, ten minutes for enriched though, I go with. Okay. Uh, that's what we do. And I'll show you how it's done in a second. And another thing I'd like you to get from this moment is that this is messy. Right, it is a little bit messy, but it tidies itself up after a while and that's okay. So be a little bit prepared to get in a little bit of mess. Uh, that's okay. By the end, take an watch. Take the watch off. Don't By the end, don't get the watch done. Getting out on the table. All this can come out as well because we're going to put it back in the bowl afterwards. So it's nice to get all this stuff out that we weighed and to put it back in the last clean bowl. Okay. So now oh, keep this to one side because you're going to need it. I mean, you're going to need that and you're going to need this. If that makes sense. Use a heel of your hand like this and just push it across the table like this. It is a mess. Just ignore it for a bit. Just go with it just for a minute because it's just buttery and slippery and all that's going to go in. Right? You can use one hand, you can use two hands, get yourself in a little rhythm, set yourself a timer for 10 minutes and just go off somewhere peaceful in your mind and enjoy the process. Put some tunes enjoy on. The taste just, for uh, 10 minutes. It is sticky, okay? I was going to say, I think if, if I was in my kitchen and I saw it being sticky like that, I would throw down handful of flour. Right, and you're not alone because that's what people do, right? This is what... This is the most common mistake people make when they make bread. So people ask me, why does my bread come out like a brick instead of a beautiful fluffy loaf? And it's because of the flour. It's the first thing I ask. If you pop flour down here, because it is sticky, right? If you pop flour down, um, it's going to stop it from being sticky for like a minute or half a minute, right? And then you put some more flour down yeah. and you keep going. And everybody's waiting for a change to happen here, for the dough to come together really nicely. And it will come together really nicely, but it's not because it's fully worked, it's because you've just added a whole lot of flour. Ah. And that's how you bake a brick instead of a brick. So if you can use your powers of patience just to resist dusting everything up like crazy, uh, you have got much better chances of making a nice brick. It's changed already. I mean, in, changed in the already. couple of minutes you've been working it. Right. I mean, it's, I'm not being. Yes. I'm very conscious. It looks like I'm being quite forceful here. Yes. And people going like this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like working up whatever those muscles are called up there. <laughs> but you don't need to do that. Just take it easy. Take your time for ten minutes. At your own personal pace and style, everything will be ready uh, when a beeper goes off. Amazing. Oh, that's perfect. So we've got nine minutes to kill now. That's all good. We'll talk about Sunday brunch a little bit. Okay. So um, it was just an absolute delight whilst watching Hangover Telly. Jack was on. Well, and, was, and you were um, you were from your home because of, you know, that which shall not be mentioned. Yeah. Um, you were from your home and you had Tim and Simon chatting to you via Zoom. That's and right. they were eating things that you made. Right. So how how on earth did you make that happen? It's, it's magical TV. Um, so yeah, what happened was I get up early in the morning and make all the bread. Taxi arrives at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> picks up all the bread in the taxi and drives to the studio. Uh, I'm at home. Tell everyone to get out of the house quickly. <laughs> all the top, whatever. Uh, and then yeah, and then and then we do a little line test about eight thirty, and then I just wait around for three hours by myself <laughs> uh, for Skype to ring. And that's how it went down. That's so cool. A little bit of a different experience, but it was fun still. <laughs> so you can see this is getting smoother and smoother. I'm just taking it easy. See, just get a rhythm, have a little chit chat, hang out, whatever you want to do. Put on one of my videos. Well, yeah. Listen to me walk along for a while, so it's quite pleasing. Yeah. So have you had, over over the lockdowns and everything, did you have so many people get in touch and ask you about sourdough? Uh, yes. So what happened in the beginning 
uh, was bread making my absolute crackers. Everyone went nuts for bread making. Uh, I started on a channel, I changed the channel when we were doing, uh, I was doing like SOS service for a while, <laughs> the, most, the most commonly asked, the commonly experienced problems people have in as new people to mostly sour it. Uh, yeah, went a bit crazy for a little while. And you couldn't get hold of yeast for love nor money. Couldn't get, there's that, a lot of things in this lockdown. Couldn't get hold of, yeah, there was a, a lot of things, it was tricky. Um, I didn't really need a lot of stuff, to be honest. <laughs> I had no classes to do, so it's a little fun. <laughs> right, I'm going to stop there, I'm not going to take it all the way, but I'd like to take it far enough to show you what the difference is after. Uh, I'm not a big lover of checking if your dough is done after you've finished kneading it, okay? Just knead it, put the timer on, 10 minute beeps off, Call it a day, let's move on with our life, okay? So here, the dough is, if you are looking for signs and you're worried about it, firstly, don't worry about it, it's all cool. If you put the work in, it's gonna be that. But it's much smoother than what it was. It's bouncier than what it was, much more responsive. If you yeah. squash it, it wants to return to that natural uh, kind of ball shape that I've made. Uh, if I cut a wedge out of it, it's quite a clear and obvious wedge. And it kind of wants to return to that wedge shape that I just made. And all of this is showing us that the elasticity and the strength that you build up in the dough uh, is good, right? It's strong. The dough is strong now. And when the yeast starts to make the gas, all those little bubbles inside, your dough is strong enough for the dough to be able to puff up and hold all the gas, yeah? This is why we need it in the first place, to make mm -hmm. it strong so it holds all that gas and puffs up nicely. Got that? Yeah, good. <laughs> um, this is why we put the work in in the beginning. Anyway, I'm going to call that a day. I know it's not 10 minutes, but we'll move on anyway because I've got a go. I made earlier. Oh no. Peak too soon. I was excited. I got oh, excited for the one I made earlier. Yeah, it's like two. It never gets old, does it? I don't feel like that feeling never gets old. Right. It goes in the bowl with a little dust in the flour on top. We'll take a Baby Jack pot and put it on the top because it makes it puff up quicker. Available from bakewithjack.co.uk. Um, and then, we put it somewhere in the house. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't pop it on a stepping stool next to the radiator or anything weird. Leave it on the side of your house. The danger here is drafts. If you're baking in a tent, uh -huh. where there are drafts, so if there's a, some air, air movement in your kitchen, Throw your baby jack pot in the bib <laughs> and just put a bowl on the top. This is more likely to dry out than any other dough. Enriched doughs always dry out a little bit more. Okay. So pop a dough dome on the top like that and it will stop it from drying out nicely. And then leave it on your kitchen side for about an hour and a half and then sit down and have a cup of tea or do what you need to do or put a wash on or whatever you need to, whatever you get up to in the day. I don't know, ping pong? <laughs> no ping pong takers. And here's one I made earlier that has puffed up. Hey, round of applause. Yeah, round of applause. Yeah. Amazing. So that was that. Oh, yeah. If I destroy the illusion for a minute, that is when it goes in yeah. and this is when it comes out, right? It's puffy. And what you're looking for here, when you're thinking to yourself, oh, what crumbs, is it done? Is it ready? What you're looking for is puffiness. Has it puffed up? Yes, good, move on. Right. Okay, it's puffy. It's doing this thing. It tells us that yeast is alive and it's puffing up and everything's wonderful. Because I get confused because it says when it's doubled in size and I think, I can't remember what size it was when it went in. No. Should I have measured it? Right. I don't get it either. <laughs> I don't get it either. That's the funny thing, isn't it? What is double of all? What is double of all? <laughs> that, that is a really good question. double of all is? Please, drop me an email. <laughs> Be great. <laughs> uh, you're looking for puffiness. It's puffed up. You already won the game because the next bit is going to puff up. Great. So now, a little dust on the table. I'm going to get it out of the bowl upside down like this. Yes. Oh, look at that. And then, if you are going on the bake off, you can divide it up into 16 pieces and weigh them all out so they're exactly equal. Okay, if you're at home, do what you like. It's just quite pleasing. Yeah. <laughs> so 60, you get 16 out of that. Yeah, right. So, right. So I've used, what, 375 grams of flour. Yeah. That big bit of butter. Gosh, 35 grams. And we get 16 of these buns out of it. Isn't that mad? Oh, 16. yeah, I really. I just because can't. Because they puff up so much. 
I would have thought that would be about six. Right. This is why sweet buns and brioches, and croissants, and donuts are so healthy for us. <laughs> because it's 85% air inside what you're eating. Amazing. There's hardly nothing in it. Yeah. Apart from that. These are the low fat option, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly, yeah. Right. So you're going to look for about 40 grams each. I was umming and ahhing earlier. I haven't done this for a while. You know, whether I should lay these out live or it might, might be boring for people. And I thought to myself, <laughs> it's nothing, you, you could not make weighing out boring, Jack. I thought to myself, this is basically the work. You've seen me make the dough that takes about 15 minutes. Yeah. And now, basically, the work is cutting it up like this. This is all you've got to do. So after you sat down for an hour and a half, Get back up again. Yeah. And, it's, uh, it's real time, out. isn't it? It's, it's real the, real, the real time of, of the job to make these buns. Exactly. Yeah, you've got the, the waiting time in between. Right, and it always sounds like quite an overwhelming task to take on. You go, oh, I need to have four hours free. And then no one's got four hours free. They ain't got four hours free. <laughs> um, Not the moment. Not the moment. <laughs> so well, this is it. This is the work. So I'm going to go with 40 grams each, so probably about 42 or 43, if I wish to do the maths correctly. Yeah, but we go 40 grams each a piece like this. Pop them there like that. And then what we do with the rest, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hey, cracked it. That was a bit big. That's okay, that's my one. <laughs> right? I think that's fair. Now, Listen, when you do bread dough, when you're shaping up bread dough, you've got a sticky side and non-sticky side, okay? This is sticky. If I mess about this too much, you get well sticky. Okay. I've got a sticky side and a non-stick side. This non-stick side is the top. I tipped it out of the bowl upside down, did you notice? Yeah. So the sticky side was up. I didn't dust it everywhere, because then it'll make it tricky for me to shape it. So I've left it. It's not sticking to the table, but it will stick to my fingers. You see what I mean? Right. Okay. Sticky yeah. side up. When we shape it, we take our ball, can anyone see that in there? Is that showing anywhere? You take your ball, you fold the stickiness inside, like this. You turn it over the other way, non-stick top. You roll it up, and it's not sticky on the top anymore. And it's a nice ball, like this. Does that make sense? That is such a good tip. Right, so every time you're making bread, whatever it is, the top is always the top and the bottom is always the bottom. And you always treat it in that way, so at the top, <laughs> is, the tension's always on the top. So if you're making a round roll or a loaf and a tin or a loaf of sourdough or a roll or a, did I say roll? Yeah. Bun, thank <laughs> you. Bun or a, whatever it is, the tension's always on the top and that's what holds the shape. You can't just take a little piece of Play-Doh and do this. Right. It doesn't work like that. You have to deliberately fold it and deliberately shape it in such a way that they have the tension on the top and it sounds like a big deal. Uh, but it's really not. It's really, if I can do it, anyone can do it. It does, it makes sense because, you know, having tried to do rolls and things and they do, you always end up with a couple on the edge that do this sort of weird, well, like, uh, yeah, look like, <laughs> yeah. or look a bit like a manatee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the trick. This is get the trick. Down, it's the same. Get Very down, good. roll them. Two-handed roll technique. Yeah, my right hand's a bit dodgy, so you see that one's a bit dodgy. See that? That's a, <laughs> that's a right hand is well there. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna roll these up into balls. Really slowly. Nice. <laughs> Line them all up, nice. Okay, because this is the this is your work here, isn't it? Nice. It's perfect. I know they're not exactly right. Yeah, but I'm under a little bit of pressure. There we go. What time is it? Okay, we're fine. You're doing all right. You're doing great. All right. Round balls. Done. Perfect. We can give these a dust now because we don't need any more shaping apart from we're going to roll out the rolling pin. I've got two trays here with parchment paper. I make sure you use parchment, not grease proof paper. Because right. everything sticks to grease proof paper like crazy. Uh, and you'll be peeling off slivers of grease proof paper before you give your buns to your family. No, That's not good. Now I'm going to roll it into a disc about 8 to 10 centimetres wide. Don't stress out about the size. You're turning the ball into a disc. That's what you're doing now. I'm going to start with the first one. 
that I rolled. We'll start this end because I rolled these first. We rolled those last. So these have had a little time to relax. Okay. Oh, so if there is a system to it, it's kind of keeping things ordered. Exactly. That's why I like it so much. There we go. And you might find that they go like this and they shrink back up again. Uh, and that's okay. okay. All you've got to do is just do all the rest, come back to this one, and he would have relaxed a little bit more to be able to push him out a little bit further. Okay, because you've done such good work making it strong and elastic -y. Uh The glutes are all tight now because I rolled it up tight. If we let it relax for a while, it will allow us to just go that a little bit further. Perfect. There we go. They look like tiny little pizzas. They look good, don't they? Right, I'm going to do two at a time now. It's going to show off. <laughs> You're getting flashed now. This is it. But I guess this is the kind of thing you have to do when you're, you're churning out so many at one time. And... Yeah, it completely is. Yeah, I'm not a baker by any means. I'm not a professional baker. I have worked in a bakery for a couple of days a week for a while, which is wicked fun. Yeah. Um, and you realise, when you're in a professional environment, you realise how much stuff people worry about at home that a baker couldn't give a monkey's about. <laughs> See what I mean? It's really fascinating what they do. But you started off in, in professional kitchens, didn't you, many, many yeah, years ago? Yeah, so I have a chef background. Uh, I've worked in a lot of, too many kitchens to count. <laughs> uh, and then I just kind of fell in love with bread because I quite like the kind of unknown about okay. it. A lot of chefs don't make bread. And I was like, well, I'm going to have this. This would be cool. Uh, and I started teaching people bread about uh, nine, maybe even ten years ago now. And, uh, I was doing kitchen skills classes and bread classes and pasta and bread was the one that people was like, ah, yeah. that's how to do it. And there was the satisfaction of just a, a couple of things said and absorbed, yeah? Yeah. It's like a massive power. And the principles of bread are universal. If you're making a baguette or a bun, you still got to develop gluten. You still got to shape it nicely. Yeah. You still got to wait for it to puff up. The principle is universal. And so once you've got your head around one, with a couple of variations, you're making a focaccia, and then you've made a baguette or a sweet bun, for example. I mean, the eight minute thing completely revolutionized my very limited amount of bread making that I do. Right. Because I very much like, like you say, would stress so much that it wasn't ready or that I hadn't right. done enough um, and that it was gonna gonna fall. I had a real problem uh, last year with the flying crust. All right, yeah. That was just plaguing me. Every time I'd make a loaf of bread, it was completely perfect. Come out the oven, I'm like, this is amazing. This is so good. Huzzah. And it would look beautiful. And then it would sort of do this thing. It would do a sad kind of, <laughs> and you'd just see. Can we have that noise again, please? Oh, it would. It would do that. And then you'd cut, you'd cut the bread and the, the crust would just be way away from everything. And I think I realised what I was doing, is I was bringing it out of the oven too soon. Right, yeah. Okay. Because with cake, yeah. you do not want to give it to, you know, you don't want to give it, you want to go over and it keeps cooking after it comes out. So it's a very sort of, the minute it's done, it wants to come out. So I've been cooking my bread like I cook cakes and I keep forgetting to switch that part of my brain off. Right. This is not cake time, this is yeah. bread time. And that kind of dealt with it. Extra five minutes, dealt with it. Yeah, go on. Amazing. All these little things like, I feel like there's a lot of disappointment around bread when it's cut. And you're like, oh, it's got a hole in a funny place. Or like, oh, mm. the crust has got a little bit crinkly on the top. But if it puffs up and you can slice it and make it a sandwich, here's a win. Everything else could be tweaked along the way. I sent him a message on Instagram. I was like, Jay, help me. <laughs> you get my cross. I started blaming the flour. And it was proper workman blaming his tools. <laughs> I was like, it's obviously the flour. Flour's rubbish. Obviously. <laughs> right, so here I've got some apples. I use eating apples for things like this because I feel like cooking apples turn into mush straight away. Mm. And I want a bit of texture. So in here I've peeled, cored, and chopped six apples. Nice. I uh, put them in a pan with some uh, lemon juice and sugar and cinnamon and just cook them down until we get this kind of thick 
uh, chunky puree. I cook them, boil them up a little bit, simmer the liquid down around them, and then kind of give them a bit of a mush. I want to keep some of those cubes in there. Nice. And now, here's what you do here, okay? If we weren't in front of a tent full of people at a food festival. <laughs> These have got to rest now for a good hour, hour and a half to puff up. Because look at the size of those buns and look at the size of these discs. This is going to get to that size. Ooh. So we're going to let it puff up for an hour, hour and a half. And we could put the apple on now. Right. But what might happen if we put the apple on now, it's going to puff up and the apple is, is going to like dome up. Right. Like a big bun. And the apple is going to slide off the edges, yeah? Oh. Um, that's not a good look. Um, right. So what you would do is just leave it for 15 minutes, the first bit of the puff, let it puff up just a little touch, yeah. and then you get your egg wash, egg wash it, and then we do the topping afterwards, because that allows us to put a little dent in the middle, which will hold our apple while the edges rise up around it. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so 15 minute puff. 15 minute rest. Brush it with the egg wash. Yeah, so 15 minutes has passed now because yeah, that's we're all imagining that. so thorough. 15 minutes far without even noticing. Is that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> right, a little bit of egg wash like this. Uh, all over the top of everything, like this, all the way to the edges and all around the edges. This is quite another pleasing thing. Painting your, your dough. Isn't it nice? It's quite satisfying. I feel like every process has its own little pleasing parts, but it's lining up balls, whatever it is. It, bread is a, quite a calming thing, and during lockdown I didn't make it for ages. I was busy with other things, yeah. had no classes to do, had no food festivals come to. I didn't make it for ages, and I was, I was not a happy person. You missed it. Uh, yeah, and then I started making the bread again, and I realised, okay, hold on a minute, this is what this is the thing that's missing. Just a little bit of calm, whether it's 10 minutes needed, whether it's a little bit of painting with a little bit of egg. You know, it's just a little bit of peace and a little bit of grounding time. It's got that real kind of mindful quality to it, hasn't it? I it's think so, yeah. The kind, of, the kind of thing that people would pay a lot of money to sort of experience right. that they can do in their own home and have that calm, take yeah. it easy, make some nice bread. And, and you get, at the end of it, you got 16 nice. pounds for it. <laughs> I can think of nothing better. Like why, why take up meditation when you can take up bread making? Exactly. You don't need a bun at the end of a yoga class, do you? I don't know. I know you should. Did. I've never been. <laughs> Maybe everyone eats buns at the end. All right, now I'm going to take quite a hefty tablespoon of this. That's a lot of filling. I know, right? It, it is a lot of filling, right? Mm. But if I put a little bit in, the bun will grow. Massive. And then you get a massive bun and a little piece of apple oh. in the middle, right? So we have to kind of, yeah, we've got to overcompensate for it a little bit. So yeah. I'm going to little little dent in the middle like this with like my spoon in each one, and that's enough just to hold the middle down while it puffs up. How long have you got? I'm doing great. Just like that. Hefty spoon of apple in the middle like this. What? Yeah, I know, right? Does anyone else? Would they worry? I'd be like, that is way too much. This doesn't look right. Like is this what Jack did? <laughs> yeah, as long as you made that thing in the middle. Me on Instagram, Jack! We'll rise up, that was a little bit too much. Let's start with puns now. Yeah. There we go. So you almost feel like these are these are a nice halfway house for someone who makes cake yeah. into bread. Yeah, right, because this is the same dough as you would do to make donuts. Yeah. The same dough for if you wanted to make a fruit loaf or mm. hot cross buns, for example. Ooh, lovely. The base is the same and the principle of the puff is the same. Uh, the next level from this is brioche territory. Ooh. So lots of butter. Right. And the majority of the liquid is egg. Really? So that's why it makes it so light. Gosh. I but mean, that practically is, a, is cake then. Well, yeah. But again, it's so light, Charlotte. You can eat loads of it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I like that. That sounds good. <laughs> right, there we go. Get rid of that. So now what you do is you could cover it up with cling film. Okay. Do you um, want some cling film? Or I've got some, but that doesn't matter. Don't worry. Okay. That's fine. I can pretend. We just we imagine. Uh, it. Or if you've got some, like I use, I use box, like plastic boxes, upturned on there. I can make a little chamber. 
That's a good uh, idea. Just let it pack up. Leave it for an hour, an hour and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. And because they're so light, they bake in no time. They bake yeah. so fast. We talk about 10, 12 minutes to bake them through to the middle. And that's the kind of thing with uh, sweetbreads like this, is you give them the minimum bake possible. And that's what keeps them so soft wow. uh, and light. Uh, like these ones, they look like I just oh, the made the smell, them. wow. Right. So this, that's an idea of the size, that grows to that big. Uh, and then you can put it in the oven. That's amazing. So you you wait for them to puff up to that size, yep. then they go in the okay, oven. Okay, little they, boost. Like okay. Little boost but they're, they're not sort of growing down. much in right. the oven. Okay. And if you're worried, like an hour and a half is a long time. You've seen them all in the bake-off do that. Uh, <laughs> is that ready? What do I do? Shall I put it in now? Shall I give it 10 minutes? But do not stress out about that stuff. If it's puffed up, it's going to be delicious. Yeah? If it's puffed up, if it's noticeably puffed, you look at it and go, well, that's bigger than what it was. Baking it. You can take it right to the cusp, right to the edge, because it's only going to puff up bigger and bigger and bigger until it can't take any more of that gas. And then it's going to collapse upon itself. You don't want to get there. Still bake it and it'll be alright, be like a cracker. <laughs> but, but the point I'm trying to make is that, what is the point I'm trying to make? Is that don't stress out about the minute details of whether you think it's ready or not. It's puffed up, bake it. Those minute details come with time and right. practice and experience and you'll build your own instincts in that way and you'll be able to touch it and go, six more minutes <laughs> or something like this you build up your own natural instincts only by practicing them time and time again that's the only way so now they're out of the oven how long do we have 10 minutes 10 minutes i'll give you a couple minutes more 11 minutes a couple minutes more 13 <laughs> don't make me set my timer and not listen to it <laughs> so when they're out of the oven get them out put them on a cooling rack i haven't got one but doesn't matter it's all cool here we go with some icing. This is a white icing. If you want to make icing drizzleable, the ratio is like one part water, six parts icing sugar, something like that. Okay. For a drizzleable icing. So this is 20 grams of water and 120 grams. That's six, isn't it? Yes, about right. Anyone match? Anyone do maths? Um, <laughs> one to six. 120 grams of icing sugar. Uh, and then just go to town, ice them all up. Here I've got some toasted up pecans. Ooh. Um, yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, these right. do look incredible. Toast some pecans to put on the top. But you can use whatever you like, almonds, or got some granola, pop it on the top, and you know, look like a, now you've made an apple crumble. <laughs> you know? That's a good idea, apple crumble buns. Yeah, oh, right. Yum. A few little toasted pecans. Yes. And again, that's like 12 minutes in the oven, probably. Uh, we didn't talk about steam. Yeah. It's nice to bake with steam. Steam makes all the difference if you're baking with steam. Did I say steam ready? <laughs> baking with steam makes all the difference. And what I'm talking about, it's not a big deal either. When you preheat your oven, get two shelves in there because you've got two trays of buns. Two shelves. On the bottom shelf, on the, like, the oven floor, for a deep roasting tray. When you're ready to bake, boil some water in a kettle, load up your bread, like that, pull out a tray out, tip some hot water in there and make loads of steam, close the door. And the steam in the oven helps everything rise to its full potential, brings a really nice colour and keeps the pans nice and moist on the inside. It's a massive game changer. I would always recommend for the faff factor. Uh, for the faff and bowl, the benefits are huge. I never bake without steam. So just a, a roasting tin and some water out of the kettle. Yeah. Amazing. Tin palace facts. These are incredible. So remind us again, what do we got here? What do you made for us? So we have apple and cinnamon buns with toasted pecans, simple white icing. Nice and warm to warm you guys up today. We get a huge round of applause for Jack Sturgeon. Thanks for coming home, guys. Now, before, before we feed the 5,000, um, remind everybody where we can find you, where we can find your YouTube channel and all of these tips. You can find me at bakewithjack.co.uk. That's Jack, not Jake. 
Uh, well, hopefully I'll be doing classes come September, I think. I don't know at the moment. Uh, bagelljack.co.uk, find me at bagelljack on Instagram, and also Twitch, uh, YouTube is Bake with Jack. That's me. Amazing. I have there's loads of stuff on there to help you guys out. I have a dog. And there might be something else coming soon for them to buy? Uh, there's a book in the pipeline. There's a proper yes, book! Yes, there's a book! The proper book in the pipeline with pages in it, a cover on the front, and it's going on shelves in shops. Isn't that oh, mad? That's so good! <laughs> so when we come and see you next year, you'll have copies of the book. You'll be signing it for everybody? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. fantastic. So follow this man, and if you have any... Uh, your bread questions or if you just want to cry to somebody um, this is your person to talk to <laughs> so please respect social distancing as you queue up we will try and feed as many of you as humanly possible one more time for Mr Jack Sturgeon <laughs>